Here we have another flow rate example, and in this scenario, we have an ideal fluid flowing through this pipe system here. Now, you'll notice something interesting about this pipe system, and that is it's divided into three sections, and all of these pipes are circular. Now, where the fluid is coming in, I've labeled that as pipe number one, and that pipe has a diameter of one centimeter and then it turns into this larger diameter pipe section that I've labeled two, and the diameter of that pipe is two centimeters. And then finally, at the end, we have a third pipe, and its diameter is five millimeters. Now, I've also placed some conversions here, so we have 100 centimeters is equal to one meter, and then we have 1,000 millimeters equal to one meter. And the reason for these conversions are because, well, in standard SI units, our flow rate Q is measured in meters cubed per second. And here we have something in five millimeters and then centimeters. So we'll need to convert these to meters in order to get the calculation to work out. Okay, so what is this question asking? Well, it's asking if at section one, we have a flow of let's say water uh, coming in at four meters per second then what is a what is the velocity at two and three and then also what is the flow rate through the entire system so i'll write those questions here so for a what is the velocities through sections two and three and then b what is the flow rate through the system in other words what is q now i'm going to write up here that q if you remember it is equal to the velocity times the cross-sectional area. And this is the amount of volume of fluid that's going through some point over a given time. So the units of this flow rate are meters cubed per second. How much volume is passing through a point per second? Now, because the fluid that we're studying in this pipe system is an ideal fluid, we know that the flow rate is going to be the same everywhere. So Q is going to equal Q1, the flow rate at pipe one, and that's going to equal the flow rate at pipe two, and that's going to equal the flow rate at pipe three. So the flow rates for all three of these sections are going to be exactly the same. So if Q1 is equal to Q2 is equal to Q3, then that must mean the velocity at one times area at one is equal to the velocity at two times the area at two, and that's equal to the velocity at three times area at three. And on the side here, I'm just gonna write the area formula that we need. So because these pipes, all three of the pipes are circular, the area, the general area, is going to be pi times r squared. That's just the cross-sectional area of any one of these three pipes. Obviously, r is going to change depending on which pipe we're looking at, but this is the area formula for a circle. If I were to rewrite this equation that I put here in terms of R, or in other words, if I took this area formula and I plugged it in for A1, A2, and A3, I could rewrite this equation as velocity of one and the area of one is going to be pi times the radius at one squared, and that's gonna be equal to the velocity at two times pi r2 squared, and that's going to be equal to velocity at 3 times pi r3 squared. And right away, you'll notice that the constant pi cancels out. So what we're left with is v1 times r1 squared is equal to v2 times r2 squared is equal to v3 times r3 squared. So now if we figured out what r was for each section in the pipe, then we can determine the corresponding velocities of the fluid through each one of these three sections. Now, for section one, we're given that the velocity is four meters per second. So we can use this information to figure out what v2 is gonna be as well as V3, given this relationship right here. Okay, so let's do that. Let's start figuring out what all these different radius values are. So over here, I'm gonna scroll up just a tiny bit, and I'm gonna say that R1, the radius at one, is, well, it's diameter divided by two, and the diameter of pipe one is this one centimeter, so it's gonna be one centimeter divided by two, and that gives us 0 0.5 centimeters. Now, again, this is in centimeters, so we need this to be in consistent units of meters. 
So I'm going to use this conversion factor up here to figure out what this 0.5 centimeters is in meters. So if I were to divide this value by 100, I would get units of meters given this conversion factor right here. So 0.5 centimeters divided by 100 is 0 0.005 meters. Okay, cool, so that's R1. What about R2? So R2 is this section of the pipe right here, and that is two centimeters. Well, that's the diameter. So the radius at two is gonna be two centimeters divided by two, and that gives us one centimeter. And one centimeter divided by 100 gives us 0 0.01 meters. Again, that's just the conversion factor here that I'm using to turn centimeters into meters. And finally, for R3, the third section of the pipe, well, that again is diameter divided by two. So we have five millimeters, right? This is millimeters, not centimeters, divided by two. This gives us 2.5 millimeters. And to convert millimeters into meters, we need to use this second conversion factor right here. So in one meter, there are 1,000 millimeters. So I need to divide this value by 1,000 to get it in terms of meters. So I'm gonna scroll up just a tiny bit. 2.5 millimeters divided by 1,000 gives us 0 0.0025 meters. Okay, cool. So now that we have all three of our radius values in terms of meters, we figured out what that is. Now we can go ahead and solve the first part of this question. That is, what is the velocities through sections two and three? So we already have the velocity here at one. That is four meters per second. And given this relationship, we know that the flow rate at all three of these sections are exactly the same. So what I can do is I can set this one term equal to this two term, or I can set the one term equal to the three term, or I can set the two term equal to the three term, right? Because all three of these terms are equal. So for simplicity, I'll just look at this section right here, just the first two terms equal to one another. So if I wanted to figure out what velocity two was, I can do that here. So I'm gonna use this term V1 R1 squared is equal to V2 R2 squared. So what is V1? Well, that's four meters per second. And then what is R1? Well, R1 was this value right here. So R1, I'm gonna plug in as 0 0.005 meters, and I'm going to square that and that is equal to V2, which is our unknown, times radius two squared. So radius two was this value right here, this 0.01 meters, so 0 0.01 meters, and I have to square that. So now if I just did the math, velocity two is equal to one meter per second. Okay, cool, so we figured out this velocity two, which is the flow velocity in section two. And that makes sense, right? So if you look back at this flow tube, the cross-sectional area of pipe two is much larger than the cross-sectional area of pipe one. So if pipe one had a small area, the velocity had to be bigger in order for the flow rate to be consistent throughout the system. So because the cross-sectional area of two is much larger than one, it makes sense that the velocity for two, V2, is gonna be much less than the velocity at one, right? So velocity at two was one meter per second, and it's a lot slower than velocity at one, which is four meters per second. Okay, great, so how do we figure out velocity three? So velocity three, I think I can do somewhere down here. So let's just do velocity three. And again, we can use any one of these three terms uh, to set equal to one another to figure out what V3 is. So for simplicity, because we were given V1, I'll use this first term and I'll set it equal to this third term. Down here, I'm gonna say V1 times R1 squared is equal to V3 times r3 squared. So v1 again was four meters per second, and then r1 was 0 0.005 meters. And we needed to square that, and that is equal to v3, the velocity at pipe three, times r3 squared. Well, r3 was this value right here. So that is 0 0.0025 meters squared. 
And again, if we do the math here and just plug this into our calculator, V3 comes out to be 16 meters per second. Okay, and that makes sense, right? Because V3 is gonna have a much higher velocity simply because the cross-sectional area of pipe three is smaller than two and one. So the fluid has to move a lot faster to get through a smaller area in order for the flow rate to be consistent in the entire system. So because the area, the cross-sectional area at three is smaller than both two and one, we know that the velocity is gonna be much faster at three than it is gonna be at two or one. In other words, the smaller the cross-sectional area, the higher the velocity. The bigger the cross-sectional area, the lower the velocity. Okay, so we figured out question A or part A of this question. Uh, part B asked us, what is the flow rate through the system? And the flow rate is Q. Now, if you remember, up here, we said that Q1 is equal to Q3 is equal to Q3. So the, because the flow rate is constant throughout this entire flow tube, we can look at any one of these pipe sections, either one, two, or three, and the Q value, the flow rate value, for any one of them is going to equal the other two. So for simplicity, I'm just gonna go and look at the first section just because it's the first section, but if you solve for Q for two or three, you'll find out that those Qs are gonna be exactly the same. Why? Because the flow rate is constant through this whole pipe. Okay, so let's do that. We know that our flow rate is Q equals VA, the velocity times the cross-sectional area. I'm gonna scroll down here, and maybe I can do this in a different color. The flow rate is going to equal Q1, and it's also gonna equal Q2 and Q3. But again, I'm just doing Q1. So this is gonna be equal to the velocity at one times the cross-sectional area at one. Okay, well, what was the velocity at one? Velocity at one was four meters per second. Now the area at one is pi times radius squared, so r1 squared. And what was the radius? Well, that was, if we go up here, radius one was 0 0.005 meters. So I'm gonna scroll down here again and this is equal to pi times 0 0.005 meters squared. That is the area. So our flow rate, which is equal to Q1, which is equal to V1 times A1, well, V1 was four meters per second, and then the area was pi times 0 0.005 meters squared. So if we solve this out, we are gonna get a flow rate of 3.1416 times 10 to the minus fourth meters cubed per second. So awesome, we figured out what the flow rate was for the entire system. And again, because the flow rate is constant, this 3.1416 times 10 to the minus fourth meters cubed per second is gonna be the same flow rate for one as it is gonna be for two, and for three. So if you wanted to, you could figure out what Q2 was by setting V2 times A2. So if you did this, you're gonna get exactly this value that we got down here. And you could do the same thing for section three. So awesome, we figured out what the velocities were at two and three, and then we also figured out what the flow rate was for the entire system.